Sound check, one, two, three. Uh, now I have my mic unmuted, but the caption system that I'm working is still going. Hello, everybody. I'm muting my mic again. Let me know how the audio is. Uh, actually, I was just noticing I think the music was a little bit loud. Oh! 
Hello, welcome to another Saturday afternoon here on... The Coding Train. I was wondering what my um, live captioning system would do with the train whistle, but it doesn't seem to have... Um... I guess you're seeing the captions over here, so when we're looking at them, I need to look this way, but my monitor to see them is over there. So, hey, how are you all doing? It's Saturday. It's February 13th. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. I love you. You're my Valentine. The internet people who watch The Coding Train are officially my Valentine. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what that means, why I'm saying it, or if this is how I should be beginning The Coding Train today, but that's what's in my heart and I am just taking my heart out boom, 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 and showing it to you here. That's also weird. Where am I going with this? I just want to say that I love you. You're great. <laughs> um, so uh, one of these days, maybe um, it won't. a Saturday will roll around and I'll feel like I had a really good night's sleep and I spent the day just leisurely like thinking about the kind of things I might do in a live stream, getting things set up and just turning things on and being here fully present and with all of my energy and enthusiasm. Today is not one of those days. I'm definitely feeling scatterbrained, quite tired. It's been a long week. It's been a very long year in the last year. Um, and it is the dead of winter here in New York. Um, there is lots of snow out there. It's quite cold and icy. I'm ready for that to end. I'm ready for the springtime. But nevertheless, um, I am here um, to be with you. And before I go too much further, let me briefly take a minute to thank today's sponsor of The Coding Train. And those are my friends over at, oh, but too many buttons to press. Um, let's try this, Curiosity Stream. Okay, wait, wait, everything's gonna be fine, people. I've got a way to move things around here. Nope, nope, wrong one. Yep, nope, nope, not that. Nope, this one, yep, that's right. Nope, now move this up here. Oh, now move this over here. Oh, nope, nope. Sorry, I'm really, I'm really uh, in trying to, Trying to work with some more captions here. There we go. There we go. There we go. Ah, ha, ha. So launched by media visionary John Hendricks, who founded the Discovery Channel back, you know, when there was actually documentaries. There's a lot of reality TV on there now. I kind of like reality TV, but, you know, <laughs> Curiosity Stream is the award-winning destination for documentary films and TV shows covering every topic from space exploration to adventure to the secret lives of wild animals. So you can sign up with that link that's up there. And in the chat, actually pin the comment in the chat. And wait a second, wait a second, I have some breaking news coming in. Breaking news. Oh, it's in this year. Breaking news. Because of Valentine's Day, that discount that was previously 26% off is now 41% off just for today and tomorrow. So if you sign up, it's $11.79. For, an H for the entire year. That's the entire year, by the way. <laughs> um, and you will also get access to the streaming video service Nebula, um, which is a streaming video service that I am a part of that I've talked about before on the channel when you sign up for this Curiosity Stream bundle using the link up there and in the chat. So thank you, Curiosity Stream, for your sponsorship. Um, moving back to um, my this view over here, I'm... Let's let's talk about for a minute what the plan is for today. And let me see if I can get the chat back over here. Uh, I'm trying to be a bit more organized and I'm clearly failing at that quite quite a bit today. Um, so what do I have on the docket? <clears throat> What's on my coding train to-do list for today? Well, the focus of the focus of um if you only knew the things that are swirling around in the back of my mind while I'm talking, oof, it's very hard to keep two entire sets of conversation in your own head going on at once. I have a really difficult time with that. Um, but this spring, as I have mentioned many times before, is I'm really dedicating myself to the nature of code. And let me come back over here. I'm gonna have to move this back up top here. Um, and so uh, most recently on the channel, um, I have been releasing, I'm on chapter three right now. So I'm putting out new videos, uh, several per week, um, with uh, lessons related to topics in the Nature of Code book. And you can see that I'm almost done, and I, I think I can maybe just go over here to Learning Nature of Code and scroll on down. There are two more um, videos in the 3.x series, which is all about 
angles, rotation, trigonometry, um, angular motion, um, and polar coordinates, lots of things there. Um, and so um, what I, um, what's coming up um, next is, um, let's see, I'll just show you. So this particular video ends with this example. And I'm gonna run it for you right now. Oh, that's actually not the example I end with. Um, this is the example, I believe, I'm not really sure, that I end with. Yeah, so just looking at graphing the sine wave, graphing a sine wave in motion with animation. Now, one of the things you can do with once you have this idea and you're able to graph a sine wave is you can take two sine waves and you can have different frequencies of those waves, perhaps different amplitudes of those waves. You can add them together and you get a new wave. So let's see if I can pull up. That's what the next video that I haven't released yet will be about. It's already been recorded. It's just about finished. Just haven't released it yet. Um, this doesn't look like the one from, let's see, um, from the actual video, but let's see if I can, three, is there a 3.7? Is there anything here that says 3.7? Does anybody see <laughs> Basic polar 3.4, oscillating motion time where I'm playing with here, 3.8, I see a 3.8. Uh, 3.3, 3.3, weird, what happened to, I guess it's not, uh, add, no, additive wave, wave, sine wave, graphing wave, wow, I wonder where this, uh, example went, um, let's look at this one. This is not the example. This is this is the visual result. That, but this is this is code. This is the example from um, 2012, basically. <laughs> and I have updated it with a class for a wave and all sorts of things. So um, I'm seeing some interesting questions in the chat that I would love to address. But so this is the idea. Once you have multiple waves, varying periods, varying amplitudes, add them together, you can get results like that. So stay tuned, that's what's coming next. Now, while I'm here, let's foreshadow what's coming in 3.8. So the prompt, the homework assignment from week three, chapter three of The Nature of Code, one of the ideas is to think about how you can apply an oscillating motion to a particle moving around a canvas. So this is the idea of like, okay, I have this idea of particles that are responding to forces and moving around, and then they have this little arm that kind of pulls itself uh, forward um, as if it's maybe a wing or an arm or an appendage, and I'm using an oscillating wave uh, that's mapped to the object's velocity to, um, to visualize the sort of locomotion of this particular object. So that's where all this is going, and if you wanna look ahead, those are the videos that are coming out. But if you're kind of following along with the course that I'm actually teaching right now, which um, is all here in this GitHub repo, um, I, what the actual homework for this week is uh, this, try using vectors. So um, if you wanna kind of follow along with the course, um, where am I? I'm actually in the videos for this week are the one the one point X series. What are vectors? Vector math, random vectors, static methods, unit vector, acceleration, gravity, and wind. Oh no no no! Oh, just to one point six. So um, what I'm trying to do on my Saturday streams is kind of do a quick homework assignment, and I think what I would like to do for my homework assignment is continue what I did for my random walk homework assignment, which was. Uh, the self-avoiding walk. So I'm going to get to that. Um, uh, I'm looking at the um, some of the chat messages here. Um, and people are asking about the um, automated captions. So um, I um, let me just speak to that for a minute. Um, it's very important to me that the live streams that I do are accessible. I have tried many different uh, systems for captioning. Nothing, honestly, really beats a, a human um, captioner. Um, the, there are automated YouTube captions. You can turn those on right now on YouTube. There's a little settings, and it will. Um, it's an overlay through the YouTube player itself. I have not been too thrilled with the quality of those. 
Um, and so right now I'm exper I noticed that through um, NYU where I uh, teach, um, NYU's Zoom account through I think believe a service that's AI li called AI Live. Um, I can turn on captions in any Zoom meeting. So right now what I'm actually doing is I'm in a Zoom meeting right now and I have the captions running and I'm just in open broadcast studio capturing that as an overlay. I wanted to see how this worked. Um, I know it's a big discussion. I would love to hear from the uh, com uh, community of anyone who actually uh, ex uses uh, re um, watches videos with captions on. I know there's a... Um, there's different points of view, I believe, around whether captions should be, uh, I believe, I, I'm going to get this wrong, which is why I'm kind of stumbling over my words here, but whether the captions should be always on or an option that you could turn on or off. Right now, I'm going to leave these on for today, um, just to sort of like see how good they are. And then I might look into seeing if I can, with an API, get these captions directly into the YouTube system so they could replace those and they could be something that people could turn on and off. Um, so that's kind of what I am um, thinking about and experimenting with. Um, just to be clear, they, it's just an overlay. So I have a button right here. They're gone. They're back. What I love about this, which is kind of funny, <laughs> um, I'm going to mute my microphone for a second. Ready? Sometimes that's what I mute my microphone for <laughs> when I'm talking to my kids who came up to ask me a question, but now the captions will still go. I can, I do have a button over here which will mute me in Zoom. So I can. Now no captions appear. No, wait a second, that didn't mute Zoom. Zoom mute button not working. Well, I can manually mute myself in Zoom. All right. All right, enough with this. I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, yeah, Hacker says in the chat, yawn, and that's exactly how I feel today. I have to just be totally honest with you. I didn't really feel like live streaming today. <laughs> Some days it's just like it's hard. People always write in my uh, – I get a lot of the um, when Harry met Sally kind of um, comments in my YouTube videos like I'll have what he's having because I have a lot of energy and enthusiasm and that's a genuine feeling that I have when I record videos and I discover something and make tutorials. I really do feel that genuine enthusiasm and excitement and passion for this kind of work that I'm doing. But I am a human <laughs> – who gets tired and um, especially during the semesters when I'm teaching and there's a lot going on family wise and you know I don't know if you noticed we're living in a global pandemic um, I definitely have a lot of privilege and a lot of things in my life that make things very comfortable and easy for me and I'm very grateful for that um, so anyway uh, but here I am I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm thanks for being here with me and let's get started and actually do some coding stuff uh, oh so uh, this is why I was so, so, so um, I wanted to just mention that actually I kind of am looking for some help here. I feel like this assignment does, isn't one of my better sets of prompts. So this is the assignment. Um, it's really this week is if for, if you're, if you're in the course, it's kind of about, oh, you've never used vectors before and you have used vectors before maybe conceptually, but haven't used P5 vector or thought of the way that you're moving, animating um, elements in a creative coding sketch with this concept of vectors. So, but I'm not so sure about the prompt here. Um, all right, so uh, if you have ideas for that, I would welcome that. What else did I wanna show? So, oh, I also just wanted to mention, I don't know if I'll have time for this, but it is, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. And I have these wonderful, I mean, I don't wanna call them wonderful. I, it's up to you, you decide whether they're wonderful or not. I have these um, coding challenges that I did um, quite some time ago, I guess two years ago in 2019. Um, about a uh, heart. This is a um, th this is really kind of insane. I don't know if they have this heart curve. It's actually a mathematical function plotted with co polar coordinates that produces a heart. There is this is one of my absolute favorite patterns in um, 
kind of mathematical visualization, the cardioid that appears when you visualize a times table um, in a, over around a circle. Um, and so the, I was just going to encourage people, if you're looking for something to explore this weekend, you know, Valentine's Day is obviously like not a real holiday. It's some kind of like, you know, essentially capitalist trick to get us to buy things. <laughs> you know, but expressing love is a nice thing. I do also like chocolate. Just saying, dark chocolate, you know, low, low sugar. Now that sounds weird, low sugar. I just like, I like, oh, you know what I really like is a good organic nut butter chocolate cup. <laughs> I'm such a loser. <laughs> I live in Brooklyn. And so when I, when I think about like a Reese's peanut butter cup, which uh, uh, I'm sorry to b buzz market Reese's pieces, not a sponsor. I like to think about some artisanal, handmade, dark chocolate, almond butter, organic cup that I that costs like $7.99 at the local store. All right, I'm off on a terrible tangent here. Um, <clears throat> tangent, ha-ha! <laughs> so take a look at those. Uh, heart curve, heart curve. Oh, I, you know, and by the way, this is also a nice... Um, uh, excuse for me to look at some community contributions. Um, this, by the way, I was just poking at this this morning. Um, this beating heart with interactive equation editor by Elizabeth Hudnot that was submitted. Um, this really is a cool website. Um, I'm just going to actually get rid of this preset uh, link and take that off. This is, and I'm going to uh, go down here and say, let's go. This, I discovered this just today by looking through the community contributions. This is a website that has several different mathematical algorithms uh, visualized. Um, it's created by um, Elizabeth Hudnot. Let's see, um, we can go over, this is um, their GitHub. Uh, there's a code pen link here. Um, and um, lots of these, I don't know that these are all based on my videos, but there's a lot of crossover certainly between videos that I've made and what are here. But if I go here to this graphing calculator one, um, click on this. Oh, select, I guess I have to click. Um, oh, I see, I need to, let's go directly to back to here and let's do, let's go. It's really cool, like the equations can be just plugged in here <laughs> and then it graphs them. And then I can like do cool stuff, like rotate it. I saw the one um, and uh, play with all the various um, parameters here. So like, what if I just change this from 16 to a 15? Does it re-graph it? to do i don't know how to make this work close path do i have to like set set i don't know i don't know it's too exciting so play around with this it's really cool <laughs> um a really excellent um a wonderful community contribution um, that i found on the website so take a look at those uh, i also wanted to just highlight uh, and maybe i'll come back to this uh, in a little bit, but one of the things, you know, the community contributions come in through these pull requests. You can just um, find them on the website if you go to any particular video. Like for example, you could be right now watching this, um, the very first person to submit a community contribution of a creative project that you made from this video. It does not exist yet. But what I recently discovered it, let's see if I can find this again. I was looking at this this morning. Yes. Someone took, uh, this was from Seven Days Over Ago, um, M Awesome Forever, who is definitely awesome forever, took the Bees and Bombs GIF recreation coding challenge and ported it over to Roblox. And we can see a GIF animation of it right here in Roblox, which <laughs> this just thrills me to no end. I haven't actually shown this to my kids who are avid Roblox enthusiasts. Um, and I really feel like I've got to get into this and learn how to do this a bit myself. because This is wild. Ah, okay. So I'm, yeah. So good suggestion. Oh, this is an interesting idea. I haven't, thank you for this, um, suggestion. I'm going to try something a little bit interesting here. So I'm putting this here and then I'm going to move myself. Here we go. There. The captions are right below me. Let's see how that goes. Um, let me just go over to the P5 web editor. It, and it, the, I think if I do this, then uh, the reason why I didn't put the captions over on this side 
was because I wanted to make sure it wasn't blocking the code if I look at code. But now I'm realizing um, this could work pretty well. Also, I'm a little bit higher up. I feel <laughs> it's given me a little boost, a little boost of confidence today live streaming. <laughs> uh, it is blocking the console, but I will deal with that when the time comes. All right. Um, I really do need to get the captions like natively through an API. This is just a window capture. And you can see, I actually, it's very small. One, I, mean, I don't mean to go off on a tangent here, but the way that I'm capturing this from Zoom is I act, Zoom, I can do a window capture in Open Broadcast Studio. Um, and to see what that looks like, I'm just gonna show you this right now. Um, let's do, oops, no, no, no. Let me show you what this looks like. I'm gonna go to window capture and I'm going to, uh, type in zoom test and I'm going to hit okay and name is already in use. I already made something called zoom test, <laughs> zoom test two, and then oops, it's getting disk stream chat, which is fine. Let's go to here, zoom meeting. So this is actually, I'm going to hit okay. This is actually the zoom meeting right here and the captions in the zoom meeting are showing up right over there, but they don't show up. They're like this extra transparent overlay window that's part of Zoom. And OBS just for what, I actually spent like an hour today trying to get OBS to find it, and it would just not find it. Um, so what I had to do was actually capture my entire display and then crop it around where the captions show up. And then I'm sort of like blowing it up a little bit. So they're kind of pixelated and not the best quality. Um, but this I don't need anymore. So, but that's my Zoom meeting that I'm in by myself. What happens if I turn the video on? There, you can see <laughs> exciting, exciting times here on the coding train. Uh, all right, let's um, let's remove this. Remove, remove. Okay, back to um, the topic of today. So my homework assignment for the random walk week, and I, by the way, this is one of the strange things now about my live streams. It used to be the opposite. The live streams were where I would try a coding challenge and then um, I would, that would, so people who watch the live streams would kind of see the sort of raw, unfettered, unedited <laughs> hours of debugging coding challenge, which I still think is something that I would like to get back to doing more of. Then I would edit something out of it and later like there would be a video um, that would sort of like take that segment out of the live stream. Right now, I'm actually recording the, the coding challenges not live streaming, and then I'm coming and like playing around with them when I live stream. So you're can, essentially getting a sneak peek on something that's coming out hopefully in the next week or two. So let me go and grab the code for this. And I have some things that I wanna discuss and think about related to it. Uh, self, yeah, here it is. Coding challenge, self-avoiding walk. And I think I might have showed this last week. I, I actually I, I did a new version of it since the last time I showed it. Um, and okay, so what this is, and let me move this up a tiny bit. That'll help. This is a um, self-avoiding walk, and what is it? What it is attempting to do is. There is, it's taking the canvas and dividing it into a grid. And every spot on the grid, um, sorry, I'm, I'm like reading the chat and talking, which is, uh, I've learned my lesson. I shouldn't, uh, <laughs> I shouldn't be doing that. Um, every, every cycle, it can go left, right, up, or down. <laughs> You know, it's my own fault, but everyone's giving me a lot of suggestions about how to improve the layout, the captioning system, and I'm paying attention to that while I'm trying to talk about the self-voting walk. I just, I think I should stop paying attention to that. See, I told you today was just going to, it's, I'm a little bit off. I mean, I'm, I don't know what my on is, but today I'm definitely off. There are more people than I imagined watching this. All right, so, but I'm going to get to doing some stuff with this in a second. So I actually want to just um, change this right now to make the spacing 50. So if the, f okay, so now the spacing is 50. And I think I would also, let me duplicate this actually, because I want to explain what's going on here a bit more. Uh, walk, uh, 
vectors homework. And I'm gonna try adding some vectors to this as well. Let's talk about vectors. Okay, so first thing I wanna do is change the spacing to 50. And then I think I would like to draw some more information so people could see the grid here. So let me do the following. I'm going to say for let i equal zero, i is less than the number of columns. And I'm gonna use j for the rows. I've learned my lesson when I have auto refresh on. Be very careful about typing loop so you don't get it stuck in a forever loop. Then if I do rectangle i times spacing, j times spacing, 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 I should get a grid of rectangles. Ooh, that's kind of crazy looking. And I want to say um, stroke 255, fill 100, stroke weight, let's give the stroke weight one. So I just wanted to, I wanted you to be able to see this grid because um, the walker is moving and I think I'm going to do this. And um, let's have it actually be spacing minus one. And these are all squares, so I don't need this extra variable. Oh, I don't have enough room. How come that didn't work? Do I have to say square explicitly? Square is not defined. By the way, one of the things I've discovered <laughs> is that my sketches tend to be using very old versions of P5 and I should really make sure I update them. I think 1.1.9, can anyone in fact check on me that that's the more recent version? Uh, let's go back to the sketch. Um, there we go. I guess I can just leave that at zero, I don't know why. So I wanted you to be able to see this. All right, so the idea is that the random walker, it starts in the top left spot. It can go from here, one of three, one of two to the right, and down. Oh, I should try this and see what if I let it go diagonally. This is essentially a graph. Each cell is a node and the edges are the connections, just horizontal or vertical connections. And so it's it's randomly walking and is and, and it not and it's not allowed to go back to a spot that it's previously been. So eventually at, at a certain point it's gonna get somewhere and be stuck. So when it's stuck, it backtracks and tries to go a different way and then backtracks some more if it gets stuck and tries to go a different way. So in theory, this is a brute force algorithm and eventually it's going to hit every spot and fill the space. It's not doing that very quickly. It takes a long time. Let's change the spacing to 100 to see if we can at least wait it out now with, with a four by four. There we go. So we can see with four by four, it just took, you know, I don't know what that was, 10 seconds. That was just a few seconds there to make its way through every single, to hit every single spot in the graph um, without crossing over itself. So what I've been trying to figure out is what is the big O notation for this particular brute force algorithm? So this is for how many possible pathways does it need to check? So if n is four, there are n squared cells. And then if it starts with one, I mean, how is it factorial? Like there, I mean, it's kind of like the traveling salesperson algorithm, but it but it's it's not that exactly because it can't go from one node to any node. Um so the most recent version is 1.2.0. Everyone's telling me. Okay, okay. Good to know, good to know, good to know. 1.2.0, and I don't know why, I don't, I'm gonna just get rid of the sound. Um, and let's, so I would love some help from people watching. Um, Hamilton, right, so the Hamiltonian cycle. O, Joe Bennett says O2 to the N. And Simon, let's see if I can bring this up on the screen. Um, Simon posted a nice message in the chat with a variety of, and unfortunately it's too long for me to fit. And the uh, this system that I'm using, which is called Distream Chat, which is wonderful. Somebody post a link to it in the chat so people can find 
this it's a discord bot and a uh, chat bot for live streaming it works better with twitch but i use it with youtube um that's made by some coding train community members um uh simon here has posted a um a, a helpful explanation of different big o notations as well as um, instead of big no, reminding me about P, N, P, P space, and exponential time. So um, I'm getting suggestions from Joe of O, 2 to the N. Um, Sarab writes O, it's not O, N squared. So an O, N squared algorithm would be something like, um, I was going to say blurring the image, like an image processing algorithm would be N squared, assuming N is uh, one of the, you know, if, if we're talking about a square, it's the width. Um, and then the pixels goes is squared. And thank you, David, for posting to stream chat. Evor is saying, O3 oh, to the N squared, max three possible new cell and two for 2D grid. That's kind of interesting. But you have to think about, like, it's not just a matter of... Anyway, it's, it's a very, very uh, large number. I was kind of thinking of it as, like, worst case scenario if I got rid of all the rules. Um, is it really equivalent to n squared factorial? Because uh, like it's ultimately something like the traveling salesperson problem where I'm trying to find the most efficient route through n number of points, which is an n factorial. And then I'm, I'm kind of taking n as the width of the square, so n squared factorial, but you know, here or there. Um, so, um, but you'll see very quickly, just even if I just go to um, eight by eight, like what is N squared factorial of eight by eight? That's 64 factorial. Anybody know that off the top of their head? Um, that's a one with 89 zeros. <laughs> so if that's really true, there's no way I'm ever going to be able to see, I mean, without getting extremely lucky, there's no way I'm ever going to be able to sit here and wait as it checks one possibility, you know, 60 possibilities per second. I was experimenting with this idea and you'll see it commented out in the code. Like, let me have it try 500,000 per frame. So this is obviously going to move much faster, but even so, uh, worst case, O oh, three to the end says Heka. Um, the the J Swarup says O oh, two to the n squared. Yeah, that I have to think this through, and probably thinking this through while I'm live streaming is not the best idea. But I wanted to point out that essentially um, this is a um, sounds like a question for Brady Heron, number file or Matt Parker. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so I uh, would like to explore this further. But I'm noticing that there, I, you know, there are particular techniques for making smarter decisions about how you can more, you know, if we have, obviously, like, I could know, I think this is what the Hamiltonian path gets at. It's like, it's very easy for me, and I'll see if I can kind of, like, zoom over to this, where I could just decide, like, well, obviously, if I start going down, then over, then up. Then, oh, then, oh, oh wait, wait, I have to, <laughs> if I start over here and just go up. And then over, I don't have very much space to work with, and down, and then over, then up. Like, I could actually design a path that I know would hit every spot in, with uh, and a kind of rule for any particular 2D uh, space that exists in two dimensions. You pro uh, Ch Chris writes, you probably need to estimate the average branching factor per cell. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, all right, so what I wanted to explore, so beyond, and we can see that um, beyond trying to uh, solve this, um, I wanted to explore, first of all, I rather just enjoy the act of watching it take forever to try to figure this out. It's quite pleasurable to me to sort of see it kind of doing its work. Um, but what I wanted to explore here are two things. One is I wanted to sort of like look at, change the example around a little bit with vectors. That was kind of my idea. Recursion. <laughs> Probably should. I didn't use recursion for this, if you could believe it. Although it definitely would have made sense too. But um, I wanted to look at, um, I believe, I, I don't know if anybody knows any other keywords I can search for, but Hamiltonian path. Um, let's take a look at this. 
So this is a path, uh, Hamiltonian cycle, uh, and I've never, I haven't looked at this really other um, much beyond just this moment. Um, okay. Are named after William Rowan Hamilton. Who? This is not from Hamilton the musical. That's too bad. Um, who invented? No, no, it's Hamilton puzzle. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Where is there some pseudocode here? Uh, is a path that visits each vertex of the graph exactly once. A graph that contains a Hamiltonian path is called a traceable graph. A graph is Hamiltonian connected if, for every pair of vertices, there is a Hamiltonian path between the two vertices. Um, so I actually really like um, one possible Hamiltonian cycle through every vertex of a dodecahedron is shown in red. Like all Platonic tiles, the dodecahedron is Hamiltonian. So this I'm kind of fascinated by, and, I, and I'm almost more interested in starting over now with a new sketch and trying to look at visualizing um, a Hamiltonian path um, through just sort of an arbitrary set of vertices. The Herschel graph is the smallest possible polyhedral graph that does not have a Hamiltonian cycle. Interesting. So, um, an algebraic uh, solve. So what is an algorithm? Ooh, Knight Tor is something I always have been meaning to explore on the channel. Um, I'm seeing a lot of things that I've been interested in that I haven't bothered to look at before. So how how do I solve it? Um, okay, Hamiltonian cycle. Hello, look up Schramm Lohner evolution. It has a lot in common with random walks. Okay. By the way, I'm giving myself the first half of this live stream to play around with this. And the second half, I'm going to look at how to have a node sketch, like render a P5 sketch. I mean, I don't know that I'll succeed at that, but that's what I wanted to look into. Um, okay. Whoa, this looks like quite an interesting um, visual result. I like anything with a rainbow color, as you know. Um, this is an interesting, this would be a cool uh, coding challenge. I might have to look at this a little bit on my own, um, but this definitely, um, this image appeals to me very much. Evolution on the upper half plane with hue indicating log of this formula. Fascinating. Oh, I definitely want to um, keep this. Now was this, what was it called, Schramm? Has anybody suggested this? No. So let's make a quick uh, issue. Always looking for new, like this summer, hopefully it's gonna be the summer of lots of new coding challenges once I'm finished with this semester. No, not a new repository, I've lost my mind here. Issues, new issue. Um, and Shram uh, or Evolution came up in live stream on Saturday, February 13th, 2021. And dare I say, Copy image address. How do you do this in Markdown? Is it this? No, I forget how in GitHub Markdown you show an image. Let's see. Um, image. Oh, it's just the image in parentheses with the exclamation point before it. Of course, of course, of course. The exclamation goes here. And then a rainbow hue Schramm loner image. Let's see. Great. All right. So we are going to submit this issue. When a walk gets stuck, search for unreachable regions and then backtrack until all of them are open. Interesting. That's what Octopus is suggesting. Uh, okay, let's see here. Whoops. Wrong, wrong, wrong spot. Uh, not what I meant to go to. Uh, all right, so I'm I'm in this Hamiltonian path. So let me look up Ham. Whoops! Ah, what happened? What happened? Um, Self-avoiding walk, Hamiltonian path. 
Hamiltonian. Let me just. <laughs> this is what happens when you live stream with absolutely no plan whatsoever to do. Uh, square filling self avoiding walk. This is interesting. Polynomial time. That fills a square grid with a random Hamiltonian path starting at a particular point. See this example. Right. Interesting. That it looks like exactly what I want to do. The following paper by Umans and Lenhart gives a polynomial time algorithm for finding a Hamiltonian cycle in solid grid graphs. For general grid graphs, the problem is NP complete. Whoa, look at this. Nathan Clisby's generator as cited by, whoa, this, so this is what I want to do. It's wild. Um, what did I use? Does anybody remember what I used for my maze generation? Um, um, this page is not appearing. Does anyone know what I used for my, remember what I used for my maze generation coding challenge? <laughs> I feel like this is, I'm redoing something I looked at years ago. This is really cool. There's also that like pivot algorithm. What's the, I, I, I feel like when I was reading up on this, there's a pivot algorithm. Let's look at this. The pivot algorithm works by taking a self-avoiding walk and randomly choosing a point on this walk then applying symmetrical transformations on the walk after the nth step to create a new walk. Oh boy. I don't know if I'm realistically going to be able to read a paper about a particular algorithm while I'm live streaming and then implement it. Depth first search, think Hilbert curve. Yeah, I did all this. Mazes have splits on the path, which you don't want. Okay, that's why it's a different problem. Thank you. Depth first search. I've done, let's hold on. Depth first search coding train. <laughs> okay, breath first. Have I not done a depth first search on coding train? Self avoiding walk. Scaling concepts and graphs theory. Self avoiding walk on fractal complex networks. Ooh. I just want to see a picture. If I see a picture of what I want to do, then I invest the time to read the paper. <laughs> okay, this is looking good. Whoa. Yeah, ooh. The two by two flower and the two by three flower in the first, second, and third generations. Each line is replaced by parallel lines of length U and V in construction of the next generation. Fascinating, okay, this is definitely something that looks like I would wanna implement. Looks really cool. Self-avoiding walk, okay. Uh, oh, look at this. In Euclidean space, the number of paths of length K, which is written as CK on R to the N is believed to behave as, uh, okay. And the mean square distance of path length, okay, so this is, there's hypotheses about how many, whoops, paths there are. Boy, I'm really, ah, I've really gone down a rabbit hole here on my live stream. <laughs> okay, okay, interesting. I'm gonna have to come back and read this paper. <laughs> a star was for finding the shortest path, yeah. Uh, I used A star, yes, yes. I used breath for, I've done breath first search, but these are all for finding the, like looking to get from point A to point B. I'm not looking to get from point A to point B. I'm looking to get, uh, to, to hit every single point without ever revisiting a previous point, which is quite a different problem. <laughs> um. All right, I might have to give up on this right now and move just on to making this more interesting. Pivot algorithm and the self-avoiding walk. Introduction. All right, I'm gonna have to read more on this later and come back to it. 
Um, because I'm, I, um, this is, you know, I, I think what when I see what when I find like some clear written pseudocode for an algorithm, that's when I start to feel like I could implement it live. I could definitely imagine making up a way that I would imagine a Hamiltonian path working. But I think actually what I would like to try right now is rather than let me close this one. I'm just curious what happens if I allow it to go diagonally. So what if I write a self-avoiding walk but allow it to move diagonally? And then could using P5, vec um, P5 vector help me with that? So that's what I'm gonna go. <laughs> Look at how perfect snake AI is written. When the snake is at max size, it is just a self-avoiding walk. That is such a great point from Chris Manning, but I'm kind of running out of time that I allowed to play around with the self-avoiding walk. So let's try to at least expand on this a little bit. Um, this is my exercise. So one of the things that I wanted to note here that I did is that I made uh, a class for any given step that the walker would take, left, right, left, right, down, up. And I think what I would like to just sort of see is if I actually have this extend P5 vector, um, what will this get me? So I want to just first be, I want to be using uh, vectors in P5. So the, I've, I've leaped bounds ahead of where I am in the nature of code course, because part of the nature of code course will look at object inheritance. So this is, if this if you're kind of more of a beginner in P5 and you ha are in JavaScript and haven't worked with object inheritance, this will seem quite strange to you, but already existing in P5 is a class called P5 vector, which has um, which stores a separate X, Y, and Z. So rather than make my own called step with an X, Y, I can just extend inherit from P5 vector. And now though, I did something sort of weird where I, I called it DX and DY. So I'm just gonna look for wherever I'm using that. I'm gonna move this over to give myself some more room. Um, cannot read property. Okay, so where do I use the DX of the step? Ah, here it is. This should now be X and this should now be Y. And by the way, so I go through all of this code and what it means and why I'm doing it in the actual coding challenge. And then this is also X and this is also Y. Okay, great. So I just wanted to do that because I want to be back to where I started. So let me hit save, but with vectors, because now I think um, I guess I'm not, I'm not doing very much to add vectors to this, but I wanted to see what happens. Like, will this just work the way I've written this? Did I write it in a scalable way where I can now add diagonal options? Yeah, look at that. I can't believe I did that. Like I just gave it, I wrote it in such a way where I'm allowing it to go diagonally just by, so now it can go diagonally. Now let me, and I, I kind of, in a way, I want to take out this extra, because I want to see what it looks like like this. Um, and let's now also, um, let me add two more. And here, now I think, oh boy. Oh, so it can cross itself because it's not about not being able to, it couldn't cross itself before because it could only go left, right, up, or down, but it's just about going to a spot that it hasn't been before. And when it's allowed to go diagonally, it can do that. So what if now I go back to making this something like 10? Whoa, this, see, I, this is pretty cool. Um, the, the question is, does this make it harder for it to succeed? or easier for it to succeed? I would think harder. And Shreyas asks, does extends in JavaScript refer to inheritance? And yes, it does. Um, let's allow it to um, just do like a bunch more per frame. Where is... Yeah, interesting. Craziness. What if I give it a much bigger space 
to work with. This I'm, I apologize that this hasn't really gone anywhere. It was, it's just like a big curiosity of mine. I guess I'm just bringing it up, and maybe later I'll get all sorts of interesting comments on the video of things I can research or look at. But I do find these patterns to be quite interesting. I have to get lucky, basically, for it to go get pretty far. Let's um, let's let it try a hundred thousand per frame. I feel like there could be some interesting things in terms of playing with color here with this. Um, I feel like this is kind of also like some kind of like alien hieroglyphics. <laughs> like I've discovered some strange alien language here. Uh, <laughs> It will never cover all the points if it goes diagonal. I think so, says Udeep. That's an interesting question. Right. <clears throat> so Simon is pointing out that there's a difference between a walk that visits every edge, like that goes along every connection between the nodes versus visiting every vertex, every node. I did want to um, investigate this further, um, but um, I think maybe I'm going to have to <laughs> move on from this right now. <laughs> it could detect when it gets stuck in a cave and backtrack out. Yeah, it's a, that's... Can it move in arcs? Okay, I love this. Thank you. All right, let's... So uh, let's try... This is a really, really awesome idea. Um, so the way that I'm actually rendering it is with um, a vertex, and I could use curve vertex. And look at this. That is really pretty wild looking. Now, inter interestingly, what happens if I just go back to the original way that it was without the diagonal options and keep in curve vertex? Actually, I'm kind of curious about that. Well, yeah, I guess you just get a kind of wonky string moving around almost that has a little curvy. So that adding the diagonals in, it really gives it a much more strange quality. Um, there's also, uh, what happens if I use um, Bezier Vertex? Ooh, that didn't work. I, oh, because Bezier Vertex, a Bezier curve by definition is always four points. So it's the two endpoints and two anchor points and two control points. Um, I'm just curious, what if I uh, um, go back to something I know it can solve? So um, yeah, it's pretty interesting to see this path that it's trying to do. And uh, the other thing about curve vertex, which I always forget about is the end points are entry and exit points of the curve. So um, what I should do here is duplicate them. So I should add a curve vertex for uh, path index zero dot X, path index zero dot Y. This is the path, there we go. So I have the opening spot and now um, I shall say path, path.length minus one. So I get the end spot duplicated. This is pretty wild. Um, like I would love for it to finish just once, but I think I might need to go back to, um, there we go. Wait, why didn't it finish the curve? I did something wrong. Ah, I put it after end shape. There we go. So this is actually quite interesting because I didn't intend to do this, but I just created uh, like almost like a glyph designer. Ah, this is really cool actually. Like this is not at all my intention. But this is what, I, okay, so first of all, I am so excited right now because I felt like this is basically one of my worst live streams ever. <laughs> and in a strange way, I just made something that I really love. 
I almost feel like this is some kind of like style gan AI generated glyph. And yet it's just random walk, self avoiding random walk paths. And they're not, it doesn't actually self avoid in that it crosses itself. That hits every spot. Now, if I could optimize this algorithm to do it higher resolution, like I really want, like, could I, can I double it? I mean, the thing that I could do is not worry about, I could just let it get stuck and not backtrack. So if it's stuck, like what if I say no Luke? Just curious to see what I, yeah. So this is actually quite nice because I could just let it get stuck. I'm generating these paths. <laughs> these are really quite amazing. What could I do with color with this? Well, you know, this is my sort of like the limits of my ability to design with color, but I'm going to say color mode HSB. And then what if I were to say, and oh, I like watching it draw it also. That's much more fun. And, and I think the dot at the end should go away. This, yeah. And I wonder if it should start at a random point, right? It's always starting in the top left. So what if I have it start in a random point? I had no idea that this is where I was gonna go. Um, so the spot always starts at grid zero, zero. So um, let's do, let's start at a random spot each time. Uh, and so this is where we're going to start. Let's see if that works. I feel like it's, why is it losing the last one? Do you see that? Like it's, oh, I think cause it's, it deletes it cause it's still doing one aspect of the backtracking. Um, so let's not, let's not backtrack. Okay, so this is my glyph generator. I was gonna add color to it, right? So um, where is the color? So if I have color mode HSB, and I say like 100, 255, 255, 100. Is that how, oh no, no, these are 100. 100, oh no, 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 sorry, 100. Oh, it goes up here. Sorry, this is for that point. Okay, so it's green, good. So this should be, um, oh, this should be in here. And then um, let I equal, oh, let, oh, so I would like, now I need a counter here. So let's do let, I equals zero, I is less than path dot length, I plus plus. And then uh, spot is path index I. And then the hue is, let's just out of curiosity, I modulus, modulus 360. Oh, I can't do, oh, it won't do a different color for each segment? That's weird. It's just doing it for the whole thing. I mean, that's, why is that? I thought I could do different colors for different segments. So that's unfortunate. I mean, I know how I could do this by just drawing manual curves. Well, am I missing something? Um, different color, different segments, begin shape and shape. <laughs> it's, 
Uh, does this work in processing if like, all right, so I always thought this is how it worked. Let me open up processing. Yeah, it's one shape. Somehow I thought you could internally um, change. I know how I would do it with lines because I could just go back to drawing lines, but let me just check how processing works. So I'm going to make some vertices here. Just going to make a quick triangle. Okay, so quick triangle. I'm going to say close. Um, actually, I'm not going to say close. Um, stroke weight eight and stroke zero. Whoops. No fill, stroke 255. This is what I meant to do. Okay, I'm just testing this. So if I were to say here, stroke 255, zero, zero, I'm just gonna, I thought I could do something like this. and it would interpolate the colors. I don't know why I always imagined you can do this. Okay, apparently not. If you do a fill, does it do it? Okay, it's all the last color. Maybe you have to use like P shape in processing. Yeah, I'm, I completely imagine this. <laughs> so I, 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 I change renderer, processing will let you multiple colors in one shape, yeah. But, um, oh, vary the line thickness. So that's the other thing, can I vary the line thickness between vertices? I don't think so. Oh, well now I have a fill. What happened to my, okay. Yeah, no. So I, I, it just takes, it just does whatever the last thing is. So I would have to manually draw them as separate curves. By the way, what happens if I allow it to have a fill? Pretty interesting. Gradient could be it. Create a new, so I could use arcs. Yeah, I could use arcs. I, I could, that's an interesting idea. I do sort of like where this ended up though. <laughs> so I'm kind of fine with it. Um, I, I think I'm going to, I'm gonna let other people explore color on their own. And, I, um, and I'm going to get rid, I'm going to say, uh, where did I put the color? But it is interesting to note how I can have a fill. Um, I know the, having the close is quite unnecessary, I think, and the fill. I'm going to go back. Interesting to explore, but I, um, I, and it'll be one thing could be to have it keep going until it can like get back to itself. So it always creates like a close shape, but I'm going to go back to no fill and Just generate these patterns. Okay. <laughs> um, I will save, you could use a gradient. I don't know about this gradient. Uh, is there a gradient fill or stroke within uh, P5?
This is not something I'm aware of. By the way, what I want to do, so first let me link this code. Where I wanted to go in the um, second half of today's live stream, I'm gonna take a break and get to the second half now. Um, so by the way, if you're wondering what I'm showing you here, this is the Coding Train Discord. I'll put a, post a link to it in the chat. Um, this is this is a where this is where the community gets together and chats. <laughs> so if you need help with code or want to join the community and check out different things going on in the Discord, highly encourage you to come and join. Um, but also, I tend to post like links to the code and different things that I'm doing here in this channel under live called links. I also I haven't been doing a good job of this, but um, if you're looking for to get notifications, um, where do I find this under videos? Um, you can subscribe to this notifications role and then you will get notifications whenever I post a new video or schedule a new live stream. So you can see this morning at 8.34 a.m. Um, I scheduled the live stream for today. This is the wrong thumbnail. <laughs> Ignore that. Um, and so if you if you want um, notifications, I think you just do exclamation point um, subscribe um, as a command, a bot command in the Discord. One thing I will say about the Discord, if you're about to join, <laughs> we're trying to uh, see if I could get Discord partner, and you have to reach a certain number of members with a certain amount of engagement. And so it looks, it, our engagement numbers go down if a lot of people join but never post. So again, don't post if you don't want to, but if you feel so inclined to join, post an introduction, engage a bit with the community, that will boost the numbers a little bit. Maybe I can get um, Discord partnership. All right, so where is, um, there is a gradient function in P5. That's an example. Don't set gradient. Is this a function in P5 or just, no, this is just an example of drawing gradients with a line. Okay. Is there like a gradient fill? Prim's algorithm. Oh yeah, I've used Prim's algorithm. I did a, um, a video on Prim's algorithm. Unfortunately, I did it kind of way before I was doing the coding challenges um, and it's sort of buried. Oh, but here we go. Yeah, and like the code's not here. I wonder if I can find it. So yeah, like you can see how this is so old that um, it's using this old deprecated desktop editor. I look quite different there, but yeah, I should revisit Prim's algorithm um, um, as something to, to look at through for this as well. Um, but I just, I, I never occurred to me to render with curve vertex um, the path through a graph space. So this is quite nice. All right. All right, so I need to take a break. So uh, I, it's time for me to um, thank today's sponsor, um, Curiosity Stream. I have something fun that I'm gonna try. So um, just give me a second here. I gotta pull this up. <laughs> um, so I have a wonderful little 30 second spot, uh, from Curia. Oh, wait, hold on a sec. Oh, let's see here. Oh, I messed, I messed up. Um, well, this is not the sponsor segment yet because I'm totally having a technical issue. How do I, oh, studio mode. I need to do something real quick. Uh, and then... Oh, how come it's not? Oh, yeah. Uh, how, why? All right, this is going to play for a second. Okay, hold on. Now we're going to come back out of studio mode, and we're going to go <laughs> here. Welcome to... No, not here, not here, not here. Where am I? Back to here. No, here, here. Okay. <laughs> I'm really excited about this. Sorry. Uh, so I have this. Uh, the sponsor today is Curiosity Stream, and I'll, I'll talk a bit about Curiosity Stream right now. Um, and you can go check out Curiosity Stream at curiositystream.com/slash coding train. Uh, the discount, by the way, is for today and tomorrow only for 41%. Then it will revert back to, I think, the usual 26%. But um, I have a quick um, ad I want to play. And um, last week when I played this 30-second spot. Um, the I got a content ID claim on the live stream, so I, just from the audio. So I am going to um, narrate it. I, I wrote down the script, and I will be the voice of the spot now. This is very exciting. <laughs> Here we go. 
From the founder of the Discovery Channel comes a new independent streaming service, Curiosity Stream, home of groundbreaking documentaries, an award-winning original series. Follow your curiosity. This is Curiosity Stream. <laughs> okay. Um, coming back to me here. All right. I don't know. That, was, that might have been a total, total fail there. But I'm excited to tell you about Curiosity Stream. So I, I've talked about this before. I'm part of a group of educational creators that teamed up to build a platform where creators don't have to worry about demonetization or the YouTube algorithm. And it's called Nebula. Um, we're partnering with Curiosity Stream. Um, Nebula has ad-free content and experiments with different and experiments with different kinds of content. So if you've never seen um, Nebula, I'm gonna just open up the page here. Nebula is a um, streaming service that's owned and operated by a group of creators. Um, they have Nebula Originals, which are not available on YouTube. There's even Nebula Plus now that a lot of creators are doing with extended cuts and extra footage. Um, and so um, there's a Nebula originals like Tom Scott's Money. Um, and so now why am I, why, why is the sponsor Curiosity Stream? But I'm talking about this streaming service called Nebula. Well, the reason is um, Curiosity Stream loves educational creators and supporting more educational content. So Nebula worked out a deal where if you sign up with this coding train link that's at the top of the screen, not only do you get access to Curiosity Stream, but you also get Nebula for free. So this is not a trial. This You're going to have this forever as long as you're a Curiosity Stream member. So for a limited time, actually today and tomorrow only, Curiosity Stream is offering 41% off their annual plan. That's less than $12, if my math is right, per year for both Curiosity Stream and Nebula, right? It's the best deal in streaming. That's the entire year. It's like $1 a month, I think, if I'm doing the math correctly. Um, so, uh, you know, Curiosity Stream just to... Um, Open it up for a second here. I'm just gonna bring up the website so you can see sort of a range. There's thousands of documentaries. There you go. Um, and um, you can, uh, this weekend only, get the 40% off. You can see, you can't see it because I have the banner up there. Um, and now you can see it there, get 40% off um, through the link curiositystream.com slash coding train. Um, it's a great way to support um, my channel, Coding Train, and educational content for a whole year. Um, since, you know, these days, a lot of us are staying inside a lot more than usual. You might as well be soothed by David Attenborough's voice or watch Chris Hadfield in the space station or just watch Tom Scott torture your favorite YouTubers on Nebula. The recommendation that I would give is Dr. Hannah Fry has a wonderful documentary series about maths on Curiosity Stream that I've been following and watching. It's really excellent. I'm a huge fan of Hannah Fry. So um, that is a, something that, one that I would particularly recommend. So click on the link in the description. It's pinned in the chat. Um, and I hope you check it out. I'm gonna take a short break. If you wanna go poke around and look at it right now, maybe sign up and then I'll be back in two or three minutes to look at seeing if I can take my example <laughs> and bring it over to see if I can render it from Node. Ooh, we'll see if that works. Okay. I'll be back in just a few minutes.
All right, I'm back here. Let me. So people were asking in the chat um, who I was talking about. So this is the series that I was watching. Um, it's a series called Magic Numbers, and in this particular episode, um, Dr. Hannah Fry uh, goes down a zip wire to learn more about Newton's ideas on gravity. So highly related to the. I was watching this one in particular because it's related to um, the nature of code. So uh, just wanted to like highlight that again. Thank you to Curiosity Stream for your sponsorship. Um, you can get it once again this weekend only for the whole year at forty one percent off. Plus you get Nebula too. Okay, um, returning back to. What I am here to do, which is some coding stuff. Um, <clears throat> let me close all these windows and get to here. So this is my P5 sketch. And what I would like to make happen is if I'm in Discord, I want to do something like type a command, exclamation point, generate. And then I want to see, come back to me, a um an image that i generated obviously uh, so so this is what uh, and i've done this before and i know how to do this not with discord but i've done a series about doing this with a twitter bot to have a twitter bot generate a uh, random walk image for example one one per hour and um the way that i did that is by running processing behind the scenes but it's quite tricky um, to deploy processing generically to any sort of server environment. It's gotta have Java. You often have to set up a bunch of weird settings to like have it run in headless mode with no like windowing system. So I would really like to look into, and I know this is, other people have looked into this and maybe I'm just missing like the post on the processing forum that explains how to do this precisely. But I would like to look into, um, um, how to do this. And so I think what I, I think a way to do this would be with node canvas. So this particular package, is it, is this actively, oh, it's from automatic industry. Interesting. Is this actively maintained? I think chromium might be another way to do this. Um, some kind of chromium like thing. Um, oh, do I have to like install or so all sorts of extra weird things? I can just say npm to install can. Oh, I don't need to compile it. Okay, build from source. If you don't have supported OS or processor architecture. So what's supported? Hopefully whatever I use would be supported. And then I can make a canvas and draw to it. All right, let's just try this. The question is, could I then, once I do that, could I use P5? Anybody have any ideas <laughs> or something else? I should try. Um, <clears throat> okay. So let's, I'm going to start just a new node project. I will, you know, I don't know that I'll get to integrating this with the Discord bot today. Um, this, by the way, where where is this coming from? This is all part of my project to generate, to give everybody in the world, or at least one million people in the world, their own random number from this book that is then paired with a custom random walk design <laughs> using the sequence of numbers in this book, starting with their number, and then have that etched onto a train whistle. <laughs> what? It's gonna happen. This is what my life has become. All right, so do I wanna install? Let's just remind me later about this. Let's go to uh, the desktop and let's make a directory node cam. Uh, let's just call this uh, um, walk generate walker generate bot, I don't know, let's call, yeah, sure, generate bot, uh, and let's do, uh, make this a node project, and open this up in uh, Visual Studio Code, and uh, make a file, what is going on here, new file, no, why is this not safe? I'm just gonna do something really weird here. Just ignore me. Okay. Um, so then let's just try npm install canvas. Let me look at the documentation here. npm install canvas. Oops, not here. 
Am I, sit am I sitting in front of the code? I might be. What? Oh. All right, let's see what happens. This might take a while if it's got to install some weird um, dependencies. All right, hold on. I'm getting fun plant. Oh, discordjs.guide has a neat guide on how to install Canvas. Okay, that's good for me to look at. Uh, whoops. Um, discordjs guide Canvas. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So this is definitely what I want to do. Uh, basic image loading. Canvas to, oh, this is great to see. Thank you, this is super useful for me. So this is good, okay, awesome. Um, you know, I could just do this with native Canvas. I'm just using stroke and curve vertex. So I don't necessarily need, I would like to have P5, but I think that I can get by without it. Um, so let's, Let's go here and um, let's just try this example for a second. So I don't want this example exactly. So I don't want load image. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna create a canvas that's 200, 200 and get a context that's 2D. Um, let's write, this is fine. Let's draw a line under the text. Sure, let's skip the image. So if I just run this right now, and let me make this somewhere where you can see it. Okay, it ran. So how would I use this? Oh, so I want to gonna save this to a file, but I guess what I can do is I can do canvas to buffer and send it as a message attachment. But what if I just wanna, before I add the Discord bot, I wanna just like look and see what I've got. So how do I node canvas save image? Okay, how to create and save an image with node.js and canvas. Uh, install canvas, get the context, fill the rectangle, all this stuff. Okay, yay, I know how to draw to it. Write file, buffer to buffer, write file. Oh, oh, how easy. Oh, this is, this is gonna actually be much easier than I thought. <laughs> I mean, without, minus the part that I don't have access to P5, there's gotta be a way that I could easily use the P5 functions though. I could use P5 as a node module. Um, I'm getting that comment. Um, I will see if I can do that. Um, the question is, will that be compatible with this? I guess maybe if I use instance mode with P5. So um, let's try this. Okay. Oh, I need to um, require FS. Uh huh. Oh, this is gonna be good for whenever I eventually remake those Twitter bot videos. <laughs> All right, awesome. Okay, amazing. So now the issue is make my own random walk design here. The thing is what I'm doing is very little in terms of drawing. So. Let's just, let's not worry about P5 right now. Let me see if I can make this work and I'll, I'll figure out coming back to P5 later. Um, I am going to go to my, I mean, should I do, I, I suppose, I mean, the idea was to try to like keep this weird algorithm pattern thingy. This seems like a little bit much to do right now. Let's just try to get this to work with a regular random walk. So, um, 
like where a random, I have that random whistle project. Um, which I think could be a good place to start. I'll just grab that code. Um, which does this. All right, this is very silly what I'm doing, but the point is anything can go here. I'm just gonna do a random walk. So I need to I need to learn uh, HTML5 Canvas. So to do can, uh, fill rectangle uh, canvas, fill rect method. Oh, I hate W3 schools. I don't know why. It just, it makes me crazy that, uh, so let's go here. Fill rectangle X, Y with height, okay? So this should be um, context fill rectangle 0, 0, 200, 200. So let's, um, let's make a variable width. Let's put these here. So how do I set the color? Examples, fill style equals green, okay. So I can do this, fill style equals black. Let's comment all this out. And let's see if this works. All right, do I have Great, okay, great, there's our PNG, excellent. Now, um, I'm going to make a variable, X and Y, width divided by two, height divided by two. Okay, I'm gonna have to work on my random number generator. Let's not worry about the random seed right now. Um, and I'm saying context, Fill, oh, that's the, wait a second here. Oh, because it's white. I, I forgot that that's how I designed it, a white background. And then uh, fill style equals black. Let's see. And then, and I would say context, oops. Fill rectangle, X, Y, step size, step size, okay. Then stroke weight, all right, I'm gonna skip that. No stroke weight, random. Okay, so then I need to say uh, math, math dot random times four and floor math dot floor with that that would be without p5 move x and y and let's see do is this is this right let's try running this okay look at that is that my random walk i think so but um, what was the dimensions I'm using in the random whistle project? Because the dimensions are specifically related to, yeah, um, let's do this. This is a little bit silly, but let's, uh, I mean, why not make it high resolution? All right, let's see what happens now. So I made random nodes. There we go. Look at that. I generated that with node. Cool. And this is what's going to get etched onto the whistle. Um, so now I just need to add this to the Discord bot. I'm just looking at the chat here. Um, all right. 
Okay, so now, oh boy, can I really make this? I've got, oh, I've got a half an hour here. I think I can make this into a Discord bot. So we got to go to the Coding Train Discord bot. Uh, Discord bot choo choo. Oh, and I'm in this number database branch. Oh, and I forgot that someone helped. Okay, so let's go to a new branch. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go back to main. Uh, random generator. And I don't know if David or Kobe or somebody who's a moderator in Discord can lock down the um, bot testing channel again, <laughs> but that might be nice. And I am going to go onto Glitch where I have this deployed. Um, Choo Choo Bot Discord. And I'm going to turn it off on Discord. There really needs to be a button on Discord. I'm not on Glitch to just disable an app. <laughs> but as those of you who've watched, the way I disable it is just by commenting it out. Um, so let's head on over to uh, Discord. And I'm going to uh, throw caution to the wind here and go to this bot testing channel. Um, I don't think, I don't know if we have any Discord moderators who are actually like actively paying attention right now. <laughs> so let me see if I can do this. I'm gonna move over to here. Um, and let's see if I can do this. I just wanna to go to bot testing. And I'm just checking, and people are typing in there. So let's do edit channel, permissions, everyone does not have uh, the ability to send messages anymore. Okay, so I think, um, I think we are good to go. Oh, Nico is typing, maybe because you're a station manager. <laughs> um, should be, oh, Nico did it, should be locked now. Okay, um, let's just, okay, let me re-enable the bot. Make sure it still works. Okay, all right, I'm coming back to uh, there. All right, so here we go. So I'm on the Coding Train Discord. I am in the bot testing channel. And if I say the two commands that are active is I say choo-choo, I get a message back, and if I say GIF, I give it a keyword, I get a GIF back. Aww. Okay. So now, the next step that I need to do is disable the bot on Glitch. Run it here, and hopefully it's working. Now I'm going to make sure it's still working. Uh, GIF. Okay, so it's still working, and I assume it came from here. I guess I don't have any console login going on. <laughs> All right. Um, so now I need to install, I need to get this going here. So where, where am I here? Uh, let's go back. Let's, um, oh, npm install canvas. Oh no, I need to give, make it a branch. Git branch uh, image generator, image generation. Git checkout image generation. Okay. Now I will uh, npm install canvas. All right. So I want a new command. Oh, I need to open up this. All right. So this is. This is all in preparation of me eventually adding this to my Discord bot tutorials. So I'm just gonna sort of work it out now. I want to add a command, which will be called, oh no, okay, hold on. In commands, I want to add a command called generate.js. And let's just go to choochoo.js and copy that in here. 
And I'm just always gonna say reply generate. So now we're in commands.js. I need to add generate and add a require. So I should have a new command here just called generate. And let's see, oops, and this is called generate. Is that like, okay, yeah, all right. So I hopefully now, if I run the bot, and let me, let me just run NodeMon so it just restarts. Okay, so I'm running the bot now locally on this laptop. And if I type in here, choo-choo, I get my message back. Interesting, is it running in two places? I'm running it in two places. I'm running it in two places. Cancel that one. I got two messages back. Now let me type generate. Uh, why didn't I see a reply? Oh, I got an error. At least I got an error. What did I miss? Replies is not defined. Well, didn't I have replies in there still? Oh, I forgot that this is here. Okay. So this is good. Oh, no, no, no. I forgot that I have NodeMon going. So we'll restart it automatically. That's weird. Oh, was it not running? Yay, okay. <laughs> so that works. So now I believe this is really as easy as, let me get my, all of this code and I'm gonna write a function, uh, uh, generate image. And then instead of writing it to a file, I'm going to say return buffer. And then here, uh, there was that discord guide attachment. So I think I should be able to just do this now. Attachment is, okay, so let's say constant buffer equals generate image. And let's put this stuff at the top. And I actually don't need the file system. I'm not gonna save it to a file. Oh, that's an interesting idea. So constant buffer equals generate image. Then create a new message attachment with that buffer and call it a uh, random walk, walk.png, then say, here is your random walk. What's member? Is that like the person's name? Um, you know what, I'm not going to bother with that. Um, send an attachment. Send, oh yeah, uh, and I need to say message.channel send. What is the chance that this actually just works? <laughs> okay, restarted. I'm typing generate. Oh, I got an error. Discord is not defined at generate.js line six. New Discord message attachment. So what am I missing here in terms of the require? I need to require discord.js. Okay, very reasonable. Um, let's try that. This is gonna be really exciting if this works. Oh my God. Ah! Oh, is it is it ready? Okay, basically. So, basically, got it. Oh, as you know, viewers watching, you wanna bring me a cat? <laughs> uh, this is Greta. She's about to appear in front of the camera. She just didn't autofocus on her, she was very blurry. I'm being brought a cat. Uh, this is Greta. Oh my God, she is really attached to me right now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Here, let's let's bring her a little closer. Um, hello, Greta. She is my Valentine. You are my Valentine. She is a very, very, very uh, patient and tolerant 
kitty cat. So as you as I've mentioned before, my kids take a baking class on Saturdays between one and three p.m. What did you make today? Chocolate truffles. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. And they're ready. So I have to go downstairs to eat the chocolate truffles. I will be down in 15 minutes. Okay. Um, <laughs> coming back to over here. This is amazing that this worked. Um, I am very excited to demonstrate this to my Nature of Code class. Um, so now what needs to happen is that any member... Well, all right, so there's, I, I, what's next here? I don't know how to even like proceed with this. Um, I just, it's like blowing my mind that this is now possible and it was so much easier than I imagined. All right, could, it would be much easier if I could make this work with P5. So how hard would that be? This is a great start. So first, let me just commit this. Um, so let me just add basic uh, canvas image generation. I can't believe how I'm just like, for some reason in my head, this was going to be kind of like basically impossible to do. Um, and this was much easier than I thought. Um, okay, so now let me get push origin image generation. So this is, I don't want to deploy this yet because I have to think about more how this is going to work. But um, um, so generate random walk pattern. Uh, this branch is where I am working on the random walk pattern that will be generated according to the uh, um, members assigned random number. Oh God, what, what, what am I doing? All right, so that's there. I'm gonna leave that there for right now. I'm not gonna merge it. What is it that I want to do? I wanna see if I can get this to work with P5 because I would really like to be able to make examples that are direct ports of my P5 stuff. So people are telling me that I can just do, that P5 is available as a node module. So this is the actual P5, official P5, yes, project. And I can NPM install it, but can I work with it in node? Um, well, let's just see what happens. Uh, well, let's try npm install p5. Now, if I were to say, well, I should go back to, you know what? I should go back to my other test. Let's go back to this test here. So I'm gonna go out of the Discord bot code and just go right to this. Um, let me move this over so it doesn't cover any of the code. Let me go. Let me let me try it with this. So bear with me. I got ten more minutes here. Um, generate bot. Okay. So this is. I now have P five installed. Then I can say const p5 equals require p5. Console.log p5. So I definitely need to use instance mode, but how do I tie p5 to create canvas as require canvas? Can I assign can I create the canvas with node canvas and then use the P5 functions to operate on it? How would I do though? Uh, oh, we have a new member. Perfect timing. <laughs> I haven't been really plugging the membership stuff, but oh, wrong, wrong button, wrong button. Welcome, Shap. 
I don't even know if you're somebody who's watching right now. You might just be some random person. Oh no, Shap is watching. Hi, Shap. You have just joined the coding train, which means you will now have your very own random number of sign from this book. One thousand four hundred and eighty-five. That is row six thousand two hundred fifteen on page one twenty-five, column three. <laughs> okay. Um, so how? All right. Let. What if I? Uh, hmm. I mean, there is somebody made. Let's look at this. Node P five. No, no, no. Node canvas. No, this is um, canvas P5 node. I've seen this. Is it P5 node? This, I, okay, it's this that I'm looking for, but it hasn't been updated in a while. So how does this work? Basically, oh, it's the whole P5 library, but it's requiring some other canvassy thing. Hmm. It's gotta be a way for me to do this. Does anybody know? <laughs> and, and Nico's asking me about the Mongo's Pete pull request. I, I will uh, uh, attend to that before I sign off today. Um, the question is, all right, well, what happens when I just console log P5? The whole thing is there, right? I mean, this is ridiculous what I'm about to do, but. No. Window is not defined. Ah! <laughs> okay. Just by requiring it. So how do I replace window is P5, this, can I override it? I just get an error just from requiring it? This is bad. All right, what if I, um, let's see. What's that error message? Does anybody encounter this? Window is not defined. Okay. No.js. Okay, so uh, could I create Like if I were to say, this is silly, but if I were to say like const window equals fake window and now run it, I mean, obviously I need to put something real there. Do I, no, I still get not defined? Wait, let's get rid of this, hold on. Window is not defined at P5, Node modules p5 lib p5 min. There's no way I'm going to find out where that is. Mm. This is this is where all 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 fails. So this might be a prompt to viewers. Um, is it global dot window? Is that how I would do it? Oh, like do I just need to do like? Global dot window is that how you do things in? I, I just wanted to like show up as not not defined. Obviously, ah yes, cannot create property request animation frame on string fake window. No problem. <laughs> okay, I just gotta like hand it this other canvas somehow. Global dot window. Uh, equals, make it an object. Can I do that? Can I read property now of undefined? Like, is that another like global variable it's looking for? Property now of undefined. So what's the property it's looking for? Okay at constants, mm, color neighbor, oh, it's, 
Oof. You have to make a face. So this is this is going to be a harder problem. It's one that I'm not going to solve right now. So I would love. I'm gonna I'm gonna post this as a project. So let me um, let me comment this out. How to make P5 work with the canvas from Node Canvas? Um, I got a to do. And also, um, a clue is probably in this uh, P5 node module, but no, 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 node P5, this. This has not been maintained, but a clue is probably in here. But the issue with this that I have is that it looks like to me, um, it is rewrite, not pre five preload to work. Yeah. I, I want to be able to make this work by pulling the actual P5 library and then just adding some stuff onto it. Um, I think this actually has the whole P5 library in it. So it doesn't really help. It might be good enough right now, but it's not going to be able to stay in line as P5 changes. JS DOM. Oh, it is usually used to test browser things in Node. Okay. Right. Fake a fake window. Um, yeah, so I'm looking at the comments is super helpful. So I wanted to try to avoid making a fake window, but that's also a perfectly fine option. I'm gonna just put this aside right now. <laughs> I'm going to say npm init and not npm init, uh, git init. Uh, um, hold on, let's go to github.com slash coding train. Let's make this a repo that people could play with. Um, new repo um, under coding train. This is uh, node, node p P5 test, uh, public, um, skip this step. I am skipping this step. And then I need to um, do this. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. Ah, I, no, 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 oh, that was so bad. Oh, I forgot that I need to get ignore. Um, so hold on, let me, let me get rid of this git repo. Nope, nope. Ah, nope. <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> What's the key command to see hidden files on a Mac? No. There we go. Delete that. Um, let's make a, uh, very quickly, dot git ignore with all the node modules. Does that say git ignore? It does say git ignore. Um, uh, git init. Then uh, git add. Okay. Git add everything. Yeah, okay. Git commit. Uh, oops, git commit. Testing node canvas with P5. Then this is what I'm remembering. Git branch main. Okay, then git remote add origin. And git push origin main. Okay. So if you want to play around with this right now, it is here. Oh, I didn't make a readme. Um, this is terrible what I'm doing, but I'm just going to do that. Um, and I will post this project into here. So if anybody wants to explore this and comes up with a solution that might be useful for me, <laughs> uh, please, our suggestions, please add it to, if you have suggestions or ideas, please add them to the issues uh, here. And certainly if you have, a, if you get it to work and want to um, uh, post a solution through a pull request, that is welcome as well. And now 
Um, let me, what was the last thing I want to do? Let's look at Nico's, um, um, this is the last thing that I'm going to do here before I say sign off for the day. Uh, random whistle. Is that what I was looking for? No, the discord bot. Um, so the current, the discord bot at present, the way that I implemented it, if I go to the new command, ooh, oh, I have to be in the in the branch that is the number DB branch. I added a new, um, I added a number, a, a, a connection to a Mongo database. And then nothing really, I don't really do anything here. Um, I'm just, right, I, I didn't actually implement anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just implemented the Mongo client. And then I heard from people that I should be using uh, Mongoose, which I still don't understand what that is. <laughs> so there is a wonderful pull request here from Gruselhaus for using Mongoose. And what is Mongoose? Because my understanding was that this was going to make it simpler. Object or Mongoose is an object data modeling library for MongoDB. It manages relationships between data, provides schema validation, is used to translate between objects and code, and the represent representation of these those objects in MongoDB. Okay, so that makes sense to me, in the sense that uh, I I'm not I'm thinking about the database as just a place to store objects that I would have in my code to sort of save state and then come back to it. So that makes sense. Um, Jawad is asking about Discord. Here's the, uh, okay. So, so, but when I looked at the pull request, <laughs> if I'm being honest, it made it look like, oh, this is confusing to me. It seems to be adding a lot of extra stuff. And that's what I was kind of trying to avoid. But let's take a look um, at the new code. So this here is, um, there's some other stuff being added. All right. Okay. So instead of, so this is good. Instead of this goofy numbers DB connects to the numbers database in this particular collection, I'm looking at a model. So I guess what is a model? A mongoose model is a wrapper on the mongoose schema. A mongoose schema defines the structure of the document, values mongoose model interface of the database for creating, querying, updating, delete. So that sounds good. I think I like this. Okay. Um, all right. So this makes sense. And this I can, oh, mongoose JS. Elegant Mongo. Okay. So uh, mongoose require mongoose. Oh, I sort of think I'm understanding this now. Okay. Writing MongoDB validation, casting, and business logic, boilerplate is a drag. That's why we wrote Mongoose. Okay, I'm starting to understand this now. If I get a model of a cat, then I can make a new cat with a name and save it to the database. Okay. Where's that pull request I was looking at? Um, so this would be finding everything. There's a number model. And then if I want to save something, I put a value in it. So I think though I need, oh, oh, like why do I need this whole extra database.js file? It's time. Okay. So I'm going to look at this more. So this is what I wanted to avoid was having like, this seemed like, oh my God, I'm adding all this extra stuff. This whole extra JavaScript file. It's loading models locally. Like, um, maybe this is only because, and then I have this like number schema thing, uh, which seemed like a whole extra thing I'm doing. So I have to look at this a little bit more. <laughs> but so 
is it true that I can eliminate this whole database.js file if I'm connecting to a MongoDB in the cloud on Atlas? That's what I would like to do. And Justin is reminding me that the kids are waiting. And in fact, they are. You don't have another cat for me? <laughs> All right, everybody. So I'm going to investigate this more. Uh, I'm going to have to... Um, and... Um, uh, Mongoose makes it easy to make no SQL schema and retrieving the data. So Nico, this is, I just did it. I want it. I want to be able to very easily, what I imagine having in my tutorial is just like set up your MongoDB online, get the URI to it. And then we have to learn something about what a Mongoose model is. And then we can do save, 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 retrieve, retrieve, retrieve. But this to me, is there a way I can avoid this extra Although maybe I maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I do want to have a manager and I need to make a whole video set about that. That's my question here. Okay, everybody. It's been two hours. Thank you for joining me today in this live stream. Um, if there's any last, a few, I'm going to let this. is going to take me two minutes and 50 seconds uh, to say goodbye here as I play this uh, goodbye song. I'm going to turn that music down. Um, I am also just going to do a last thank you and reminder about today's sponsor, Curiosity Stream slash Coding Train. Uh, please check that out. Um, only today and tomorrow, 41% off the entire year subscription, plus you get Nebula for, for free. Um, the channel asked, do you still teach at NYU? I do. I definitely do. And if you want to follow along what I'm kind of focusing on, I've kind of, I've got right way off track here. Um, uh, check out the Nature of Code syllabus, Spring 21. Um, I am currently in the semester working on this particular week. So this is the stuff that's active on recording new videos. Uh, Glenn says goodbye and thanks for the motivation. <laughs> I appreciate that. Very kind of you. I'm glad that this was motivating. Oh, finished with my coffee here. Uh, do a video with CJ. I would love to do another video with CJ again as well. Thank you for that suggestion, Riz. Lots of waving. Um, this is, it's nice to spend my Saturday afternoon. So stay tuned. What's coming out next? Many more 3.x videos. <laughs> you should see the look on my daughter's face staring at me. <laughs> These puppy dog eyes opening wide and sad face. Bye, Justin. Bye, Shreyas. Um, I tend to be streaming on sa oh, next Saturday. There will not be a live stream for sure um, because I have another commitment on next Saturday. So I don't know when <laughs> my next live stream, but it has been recently on Saturdays between 1 and 3 p.m. It will definitely not be next Saturday. So hopefully there'll be another one. Is there another Saturday in February after next week? That'll be probably the last one. I should also, I should be doing the baking class, right? I should be doing the baking class, not live streaming during your baking class. Would you agree with that? <laughs> There's a big nodding of a yes there. Uh, Gloria Pickle, um, uh, Angel Angela Bell asks, can we see your dog? Gloria Pickle is not available. She's not up here. Um, I can pull up a picture of her probably, but... Um, but she's not available. Do a Discord bot with some sort of front end. Um, Mini Jimmy is programming pinball this afternoon. Thanks, everybody. I have to say goodbye now. I will see you next week. Oh, not next week, but stay tuned for all the videos that are coming out. Write things in the comments. I really like reading them. Share your projects that you're making. I really like seeing them. And see you next time on The Coding Train. Goodbye, everybody. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, son. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, son. This dot, this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, son, this dot, this dot, this dot, never forget this dot. This dot. This
dot, this dot, never forget the this dot. I'm gonna do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song, never forget the this dot. I'm gonna say once again, here we go, sing it with me. It's the forward, forward, coordinate song. The forward to Cartesian coordinate song. <clears throat> Auto tune and the internet will fix that for me. Sing it with me. It's the forward to Cartesian. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate song. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate song. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate song. Unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes. What else is there? Yes, kittens. Thank you very much. Kittens and rainbows and cupcakes. Notice that, and look what I get. I'm really losing my mind. Okay, let's do it. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens, 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 kittens and kittens and kittens, kittens and 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 kittens and kittens. I feel just sort of like a nice feeling of relaxation. Everything's gonna be okay today. Dream is not broken, it has not frozen. This is a this is a wonderful thing. Okay, we're gonna do it. I'm really getting to something. I need my sound effect. Syntax, I forgot. Uh, there was one other thing here that I think is important that I will use continuously over and over again. All sorts of text generation analysis things that I will use continuously over and over again. First thing I need to do is, yes, kittens. Kittens, kittens. I'm really losing my mind. Okay, we're gonna do it. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens, 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 kittens and 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 kittens